Today we were on our trot lines on the Tom Bigby River and one of our prize catches that we love to catch a flathead catfish. Some people call them yellow cat. Uh, so I've got a couple of those fillets or several of those fillets um, cut into what we call catfish nuggets. We're soaking them in cold ice water, getting them ready for the fryer. Along with the catfish, we're gonna do hush puppies. I've already taken my cornmeal, chopped up a Vidalia onion to add to the cornmeal, and now I'm doing some of my candied jalapeno peppers, which will add to the hush puppy mix. We'll put in two eggs, a little bit of milk, and then my secret recipe is always like to add a little cream corn to the hush puppy mix. Makes a good, light, sweet hush puppy. Goes really good with the fish. And then we will do some fries in the uh, fryer after we finish the fish and hush puppies. All right, now we're going to uh, finish up our mixture of hush puppies. As I said, we're gonna add at least one egg to the hush puppy mix. There are probably two. These are grade A jumbo eggs, so two ought to be plenty for our hush puppy mix. I've added the two eggs, and now the candied jalapeno peppers that I diced with my dicer here will go into the mix. Uh, as I said, I always add my secret recipe, a little cream corn. I won't use the whole can with this batch. And then we're take, doing lactose-free milk. We will add a little bit of that to the mixture and some salt and pepper. No sugar really needed because of the sweet corn and the candied jalapeno peppers. We'll mix that up real well and they'll be ready to go into the hot grease. We're waiting on the grease to warm now and we'll batter the fish when we come back. All right, the oil outside has reached about 350 degrees, so we're about ready to batter our fish. As you see, the fillets of the flathead have been laid out here. The key in doing the fillets is to make sure you get all the red meat off the fillet. So as you see, we have a nice white pinkish color catfish. And then what you do is you lay them out on a cutting board. I lay them out on a cutting board, put them on a paper towel. And the key is, is to dry them off. Remember, they've been soaking in cold ice water. The cold ice water firms up the fillets and makes them better when you fry them. So I pat them off with a paper towel, and then before I batter them, I like to put salt and pepper individually on each fillet. It doesn't have to be a lot, just enough to give them some flavor. I come back with the pepper, and then we are getting close to ready to put them in a batter. Now, the reason you want them dry is I like a light fried fish. I don't like heavy crust on the fish. What I'm using today is Zataran Seasoned Fish Fry. Bought it at Kroger, Dollar General, several places around town have it, of course, Walmart. And so what we'll do is we will add some of that to our bowl here where we can batter the fish. Always take some Tony Sachery's Creole seasoning. I add it to the seasoned mix, even though it's already seasoned, but it'll give the fish a nice little more salty flavor. And then I do add pepper to the seasoning as well. Once that is mixed up good, and excuse me for using my hand, but that's just the way I cook. Um, so now that the fillets have been salt, peppered, dried, we will place them into the batter, toss them around, lightly coat them, shake them really good before we put in the fryer. When I come back, we'll be placing the fish in the fryer for the frying. All right, we're out here on our back porch facing the river. Got a beautiful view exactly where we caught the fish, really only about a mile down the river from here. As you see tonight, I'm using my small, uh, my small uh, Bio Classic fryer. It's up here on our second deck where it's real small. We fry egg rolls, a lot of different things out here. But as you see, I battered the fish, and before I place them in there, I shake them off real good and place them in the fire. I have ke I've kept the heat at about... 350 degrees to make sure they don't cook too much or cook too quick. As you see, I'm laying the fish in there. Grease is nice. Of course, the fish will cool it down a good bit. And what we watch for is as the, fri as the fish fry, we watch for them to come to a float in the grease. When they are floating on top, then you know the fish are ready. So we're looking at about five to seven minutes in frying these fish. We'll be back when they're ready. All right, we're back out here. As you can see, the fish are starting to float. So as I said, when the fish start to float like that to the top, that means they're ready. As you see, they're nice golden brown. We don't want to cook them too much. And what we're going to do is we're going to shake the grease off here. And I've got a pan over here with a paper towel. I've already scooped a couple of pieces out because they were a little smaller and floated early. But what we'll do is we'll take it in and we have a Black & Decker convection oven, a little toaster oven. It's got a warm setting on it. I set it at 150. Just keep warm, and then we will add the uh, fillets to that 
and we'll keep them warm as my pan turns around but we'll keep those warm as we take them inside and we'll put in our next batch all right we're out here again our second batch of fish is ready as you can see melissa's filming here she can show you the fish are floating again and so the second batch and final batch is ready of course i overdo everything i've overcooked i've overcooked too many fish i've got my basket back fixed so maybe i won't drop this one on the deck but uh as you see these are a little smaller fillets so they didn't have to cook as long but a nice golden brown and they will uh, go back into the toaster oven we the grease will be turned up a little bit we'll turn the heat up we'll do our fries next you always do the hush puppies last because you want to turn the grease way down for the hush puppies so we'll be out here to cook the fries in just a few minutes all right now we're ready for our fries of course we have a commercial hand uh a commercial fry cutter but i cheated a little bit tonight we just stopped by dollar general picked up some grown in idaho hand cut fries they work really well with fish everybody knows how to fry french fries but the key is is after you cook fish in the oil when you fry the potatoes the potatoes pull the fish taste out of the oil so next week if we decide to do egg rolls or come out here and fry some pork chops whatever we're going to fry in the same grease it removes the fish taste so we're going to add the as i said i turned it up a little crank the heat up a little bit we'll add the fries i'm not a big fry eater but we're going to cook several as you see the grease has gotten hotter a lot of people like to double fry the french fries, let them cook a little bit. As they start to cool down, pull them out, let them sit for about a minute out of the oil, and drop back in. That'll double cook and make them really crispy. We'll be back once the fries are ready. All right, now we're back out here. I've taken the fries out, put them in the oven, keep them warm, and now I have pulled out of the refrigerator, and it's always good to refrigerate it after you make it, the hush puppy mix that I told you all about earlier. So the hush puppy mix is now you see the consistency of it it needs to be pretty thick about like a, a thick cookie dough and what we do is is we turn the oil down on the uh, fryer so the oil is turned down to I mean, you want it below about three cook it about 300 uh, the secret to this is I have a cookie scoop some people think it's a cookie scoop some people scoop watermelon or other fruits with it but it is one of those that has a release in it so it will release the uh, hush puppy batter as it goes into the oil of course all you have to do is a small scoop filling up the hole and wham into the grease as you see i've got it turned down so it's not boiling nearly as much and what we do as you see the hush puppy the dogs are out here with us and the dogs love barking at the uh, possums that come up in the yard or the armadillos they're out there eating my grass that i planted the armadillos are and so as you see the hush puppies immediately start rising to the top we got a big batch here we could cook hush puppies for days we better call the neighbors to come over and have a, a hush puppy appetizer but as you see this thing works perfect it releases the hush puppy and they come up in a perfect round shape the oil is cut down where they will cook internally and they will come out nice and golden just like the fish these will cook probably five to seven minutes as well and they will be ready and when they're ready we'll be ready to eat all right as you see the fries have been pulled out they were in the oven and now our hush puppies are ready so i'm gonna go ahead and spoon them out as you see i cooked way too many hush puppies but they're a nice golden brown a little more brown than golden but i think they should be really good typically the recipe that i described to y'all is a really light recipe the corn and the candied jalapenos they add a little sweet heat to the uh to the hush puppies and so they're really good um as y'all may have noticed i've been out here cooking and enjoying the uh the cool night it is cooling down a lot i am drinking a little high noon for a little relaxing adult beverage after a long day in the law office uh, as many of y'all know i love to come home and work with melissa in the garden and watering plants and doing all this but one of uh, the loves is cooking and uh, as you can tell by my little belly here so anyway we're gonna go in I'm gonna lay out the food I'm gonna tell you one more secret and we'll be ready to eat all right everything has come out of the fryer now we are ready to eat as you know we got flathead catfish hush puppies french fries always a little secret of course everybody knows about lemon and on catfish but what I also do is I always slice up a bite of onion and then what I do is I put it in a small bowl and I put on cold water and ice over it it makes the onion very crispy 
and very refreshing. I cannot eat a piece of fish without having a bite of Vidalia onion. Really, really good. Some people mix a little vinegar and sugar with it as well, but I prefer mine just in cold ice water. Makes it really crispy. Um, I've enjoyed cooking this meal. Look forward to uh, cooking more in the future. Hope you join us again. Good to see you. Melissa and I are ready to eat. Thank you so much.